First of all, my um, thoughts and prayers um, go out to uh, Virginia. And that whole community, everybody was affected by the tragedy. Wow, uh, my heart hurts. Um, got opportunity um, to meet Coach Elliott. Um, one time, my time that I spent at IMG, uh, what a stand up um, guy. So I, I hurt for uh, them and, the, and those families. So. Uh, Auburn family definitely be uh, having them in our prayers. Uh, I am uh, very appreciative of um, the Auburn family, uh, the way that they showed up um, Saturday night. Uh, wow, what, what atmosphere. Uh, but great win. But now it's time for us to uh, turn that page, which, you know, I, as a son, they definitely uh, turned the page on that um, because we have a, a Western Kentucky team that's, that's pretty doggone good, uh, very explosive on offense. Um, got, a, got a good defense. Uh, guys play hard. They're well coached. There's a lot of guys on the staff that <laughs> – they know a lot of those guys done coach with them, with Coach Helton. So I got a, a lot of respect uh, for them and that staff and that team. So um, we are going to have to come bring our A game. So uh, once again, I'm calling on the Auburn family. Like, like I need help up here. We need help. So um, come pack the house out. And uh, let, let's have let's have fun and um, try to go get a victory. With that said, we can open this thing up for questions. Uh, Brian Stoltz, Auburn Rivals. Uh, Cornell, uh, going against Mississippi State is kind of like going against Western Kentucky. They pass the ball, pass the ball, pass the ball more. How much experience or how – sorry, let me, let me start over. How much benefit does it have that you already played a team like Mississippi State that throws the ball so much when you're facing a Western Kentucky team? And of course, I, I mean, to me, the game, playing the game of football is about confidence. And, um, you know, defensively, um, the way they play against Texas A&M, uh, the way they play against Mississippi State and familiar with a team throwing it um, every snap. Um, now we should be uh, even more prepared and go and kind of know what to expect and uh, be confident going in that game. So um, don't guarantee you nothing, uh, but those those guys should be confident. And I'm I'm pretty doggone confident in that defense, man. Enjoy watching them guys fly around. Jason, Carnell, Jason, off from two four seven, running game. You take over. Will friend, you got a three offensive line coaches now on the, on the offensive staff. Obviously, it's going to be an emphasis, but what have you seen out of that group the last couple of years, especially, and, and how much more effective they've been running football? Um, well, uh, once again, you know, as running backs, we get all the attention uh, because we're carrying the ball, but honestly, um, no guys up front. They – they're moving people. Uh, they fighting. Um, they they are together. Um, they're straining out there. Uh, they're getting a hat on the hat. And now those backs, man, from uh, Jarquez, Tank, even Demar, when those guys get the opportunity, man, they're running hard. Um, they're breaking tackles. Uh, what in this in this league here you have to do. And um, I just think as um, far as the run game. We're just in sync uh, with each other, man, and playing playing a lot better. And that's a, you know, uh, that's a credit to those coaches, uh, Coach Friend and Coach Bernardi, Coach Simmons, uh, Coach Hillier, Coach McDaniel, getting those guys um, ready to play and uh, coming up with a plan. You mentioned confidence on defense as a former running back. How much, how much confidence does it give you when you start to feel that success and running the ball and it starts to add up a little bit? Man, so much confidence. Like, Jarquez, Tank, like them guys feed off each other, man. Um, I know that feeling of, 
you know, uh, being Jacquez R. Tank, where uh, Randy Jean Brown out there doing good, or Brandon Jacobs out there running the rock, or Trey Smith, and it's like you happy for him, but you like, I want some of that action. So, um, you know, that's, that is how, how it's going down, and, man, they feeding off each other, and uh, what a – what a really good uh, one-two punch, man. They they definitely uh, complement each other. Tobias, Wilboyan.com. Have a good day so far. Um, how much did the win impact your decision making in the kicking game as well as the pass kick? I noticed like you didn't go to McPherson for a field goal until the third quarter. Uh, ask that again. You say the win? Yeah, but both the kicking game and passing. How much did it affect your decision making? Uh, um, uh, say, say, say the question the again. The win. The win. Yeah. Oh, the win. Okay. How much did it affect your decision making in the kicking game and passing game? We'll get it there eventually. Uh, honestly, it, 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 you know, for us, uh, for us kicking the ball, um, you know, it, it, it does affect your decision because um, uh, McPherson, man, he, he have a big leg. And, man, he, he's going to be gonna be one of the better kickers to uh, play here. Um, but when that win in our face, now, you know, time we had to get to 25-yard line versus, you know, get him an opportun opportunity around that 35, 38-yard line. So, you know, the win did uh, make a difference, make a lot of difference, especially on kick-out punts. You know, just to, just adjusting guys, you know, uh, as far as our uh, punt returner, I know the win uh, played a factor there. But, um, again, we we can't use that excuse. Uh, Texas A&M, they, they, they got to play with the win, too. You did in the passing game as well? In the, pa in the pa passing game as well. Um, you know, the wind uh, definitely could, can affect throws, uh, especially when you're trying to, you know, throw deep into it. Um, so, yeah, of course, in the passing game, affects it too. Tom, kind of like, uh, know the passing game has struggled a little bit. Wide receivers only have one reception that uh, bars touchdown. Um, what can you guys do to kind of get them more involved these last couple of games? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yes, we, um, you know, we again that 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 is uh, it, it. It starts with with uh, me. Um, some way, some uh, we we got to put those guys <clears throat> in better position. Um, you know, um, but we also got to um, uh, make make those throws whenever they there. And take advantage of the looks, um, but um, collectively, um, uh, myself, Coach Friend, Coach Hillier, and uh, Coach Hartline, we, you know, we have to we have to be better. And of course, I, I don't let them uh, know that, you know. But also, um, we have to also uh, make plays out there too. So. Yeah, Cornell, uh, looked like you guys had a good tackling night. Is that what you saw from the coaches' film when you graded things? And also, were there any players on offensive defense who really stood out when you graded the film? Yes, sir, um, effort on defense. Um, I mean, I I, I played um, running back, but my heart was always kind of on, on de defensively in high school, love to strike people. And, uh, you know, just understand that concept of getting to the football, 11 guys playing together, relentless finish, hitting, striking people. Like that That creates so much momentum, like creates confidence. And, um, you know, uh, Kobe Wooten, man, what an outstanding game uh, he he had. I mean, the sack fumble uh, was huge that um, kind of sealed the game. Air Force, and then I think, you know, guys in that secondary, man, they play lights out. You know, I think uh, up until that 80-yard um, drive there, they was going to Fort, they had 135 yards. Like, 
in the SEC. I mean, I know they've been struggling on offense, but to have 135 yards and finish the game with 215 yards, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's total um, team effort there for us defensively, guys buying in, guys serving, you know, guys in, in the right place, re winning the pre-snap and uh, studying the keys. So uh, that was excellent um, to see. And uh, what was your second question? Oh, it, just, it looked like there was hardly any missed tackles in that game, <clears throat> especially compared to some of the earlier games. Um, you know, one player's mentioned there was 11 missed tackles the previous game and been 22, the one before that. So I just wondered, uh, you didn't have any missed tackles that were, I didn't see a whole lot. No, nah, I, uh, I don't have uh, good. I don't, I don't have the exact number uh, missed tackle we had, but from from me watching, uh, I I didn't I didn't see very many. And if it was, it was, it was guys coming. You know, they a, a lot of help there. So uh, you know, then off, offensively, I think you uh, who stood out there. Um, of course, I think offensive line. Um, you know, in the run game, they did a lot of good things. Uh, we 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 still got to show up. Uh, you know, the, the the pass protection we have to get uh, better in that aspect. But you know, I thought uh, both backs ran hard. Uh, Robbie, of course, he he's gone. That kid, that, that, that kid, a fighter. He he he's gonna play hard. He's a competitor. Uh, just just got to continue to settle him down and. He harnessed that that energy that he you know he he have there, but um, you know I thought we did a lot of good good things on, on offense though, but we got to get better in the red zone. I think we kept the ball for thirty six minutes there, which is a huge two hundred seventy yards, and then um, whenever we can add and get some you know some. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, voice cracking from, you know, when whenever we get that passing game rolling, uh, we we gonna have a chance to be lethal. Uh, middle, Justin, for uh, Kellogg, you guys have a senior day uh, on Saturday. There's a lot of seniors y'all got on this team, especially quite a few of those guys decided to come back for their, that extra COVID year. What can you say about that class and just kind of those guys continuing to fight even though this this season's been so difficult? Y'all been through so so much as a team. Wow. Well. I mean, we we are just talking about like this year what those seniors have have been through with the uh, coaching change, uh, with everything that happened, you know, the off season. Um, but I mean, you have to take it back even farther. Uh, I mean, and have been through two coaching changes. I mean, coordinators, position coaches, and then not to even mention COVID. I mean, wow. Um, those guys I've been through a lot, but one thing I can tell those guys, I tell them they're going to be better because, you know, uh, have not one time have they flinched. You know, they don't stay steady. You know, um, they done kept the faith. They continue to believe. And I just um, thank those young men. Uh, they're going to do some really cool things. Um, in life um, because of all the adversity that they done been through and how they done handled it. So, uh, man, it's um, – can't remember when I was a senior. That day is, you know, a special day. So, it's sad to um, see guys go. But uh, I am uh, look, looking forward to them guys and it's something that they should be honored for, especially this group with all they done went through. Hey coach, no group that's run the Auburn Lansman. I believe y'all ran it three times for every passing. It's it's fifth day, man. Four times for every pass last week. So just how do y'all plan to like stay on predictable and you know, do you feel like the Well, kinda wanna get back to Auburn old school football. Um Auburn to me is about work hard work. You know, Auburn is about toughness, perseverance. Um, so, you know, we we want to be tough and we want to be physical. So, 
Uh, I think one of the greatest thing about the game of football is when your opponent know that <laughs> you're running the ball, but you still impose your will on them. It takes the fight out of a lot of teams. So um, I'm honestly um, okay uh, with us running the rock and having success, but also I know that we do got to get better and we're going to need our pass game um, down this stretch to win ball games. And we are going to get better. We are going to get better. Those guys that are doing a heck of a job right now getting a plan together. Uh, Robbie's going to get right. Receivers going to get right. It, it's, it's not all on them. We got to put them in be better position. And when their numbers are called, they got to make plays. But um, I, I don't I don't mind that uh, three to one ratio right right, right now uh, running the football because we want to be the most physical bunch. Let's go back to the bias. <clears throat> who are your players of the week and who gets the game ball? Like, what are you gonna do with it? Um, I'm I'm honestly doing away with uh, player players of the week. We um. You know, I just um, honestly think with, you know, NIL and everything that's going on, the game is so individualized um, right now uh, where, you know, I'm, I'm going to rec recognize the uh, defense and mention guys who, you know, play good. Uh, congratulations to uh, Kobe Wooten for um, getting uh, defensive uh, player of the week there, so I, I will uh, rec recognize him before as, you know, players of the game, things like that. I, I, I just want to keep it, this unity, keep it in this team uh, aspects, man. And then uh, just with the game ball thing, are you, you keeping it or are you giving it to anybody? Or game you? ball? Yeah. No, that, 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 that game ball, no, you know, you know, that, that game, but I'm keeping that one now. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. Um, it's crazy because I usually, um, when I was a player in, in you know, my career, I, I honestly never kept any of my trophies, my record of the year stuff. Like, I gave it all to my mom or my daddy. Never kept anything. Um, I just, hey, you guys can have it. And really, honestly, um, I was very appreciative, sure, but didn't put too much value on individual things, to be honest with you. But, you know, now that I got kids and a family, that not kind of changed um, because my boys, they uh, they definitely think those things are really cool. So, you know, to uh, keep a game ball and, and have it down in the basement and let the boys see that this was their first Tiger walk that they walked in. It was their first – game where they, you know, uh, daddy won. Uh, yeah, I, I think I, I, I think I'm think i going to keep this one. Anything else for Carnell? Got a couple more. Um, on that note, what was your favorite moment from Saturday? Wow. That is a loaded great question. <laughs> oh. Honestly, my favorite moment was to see, uh, of course, you know, the fans, the Auburn family, um, but to see those former players on the sideline. Like, I... I got a chance to reflect guys that, wow, that I that I fought with, trained with. I'm talking about a lot of good memories. And it was just replaying in my mind. So I honestly think that was the coolest thing, seeing the smile on their face. Like all them guys being in the locker room. Um doing the uh when I address the team and then after the game having all those players in the locker room. Like it was it was crazy to see. Like it it just came full circle. So I I, I mean honestly, uh, I I that was my favorite part about Saturday to be honest with you. Carl we got one more for two more on the right here. 
Lily Stewart, the Auburn Plainsman. Going back to the game ball, how did it feel getting it? Because you've taken a lot of responsibility over the past few games about the players and decisions that were being made. So how did it feel to get some respect back from them in that big moment? Uh, well, ooh, it, it honestly caught me by surprise because um, – I mean, I did the speech, you know, we we're bringing up, we we, we, we dance, we, <laughs> so um, to have the captain, um, D. Hall, you know, to have O and them guys uh, come up and present me um, with the game ball, um, that's when I kind of, it hit different, kind of realized, like, man, it it this like, this real, like, <laughs> just won the game and to hear, you know, them guys say, you know, that they appreciate me, me pouring into their um, life because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, like I told my guys, man, like, it's about life lessons for for me. Um, you know, uh, those guys g give me so much purpose. Those guys help me um, so much to be a better man. And so to hear those guys, you know, say those things and be appreciated, I, it made, it definitely made, made, made me smile, made me feel good. Got one more, Mark. Did any of your former teammates offer any good, bad, or ugly advice on how to coach Saturday night? <laughs> well, I got about I got like two three, nah. I got two different Auburn group chats, and from Mississippi State to Texas A and M, like they were ringing, like special Mississippi State. You know, lat you can't do that. I'm 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 going through the man. You you got to kick the field goal, like <laughs> and you ain't playing no video game, like so. So yeah, they are. You know they they have been very su supportive, but um, you know everybody everybody can be a coach. You know, coaching from the couch, and everybody can you know second guess and you know do all that. But man, I um, this team uh, once once we practice some, once we decide that we gonna give it a go and we gonna do some. Like we are gonna do it together, and if it whether it work or don't work. Uh, I'm gonna get a credit, you know, to my coaching staff. And if it don't work, um, it's I would take the blame, and that's all. That have been my my approach um, with this coaching staff and and the team. So no pressure on those guys. You guys go out and call it, do what you do, and let me jump on the shore and take the blame because ultimately it, it is on me because I make make the decision. Which is weird to say, like I, I <laughs> that I make the decision, but pretty cool. Carnell, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.